In this video you will see the DNA results, autosomal DNA, predicted appearance, predicted traits and GD match results of an Egyptian mummy who lived before the Roman period, before the Arab conquest, basically Aboriginal Egyptian. Now this is the information that I found on the ENA, uh, European Nucleotide Archive, about this, these uh, genomes. And this genome was a part of this uh, 90 mitochondrial genomes. So. The samples recovered from Middle Egypt span around uh, 1300 years of ancient Egyptian history from the New Kingdom to the Roman period. Our analysis reveal that the ancient Egyptians shared more ancestry with Near Easterners than present-day Egyptians. That's right, more ancestry shared with Near Easterners than present-day Egyptians. So they weren't blacker than modern Egyptians. In fact, the modern Egyptians are the ones who are blacker than them. Uh, and it says the modern Egyptians who received additional sub-Saharan admixture in more recent times. Uh, so, this is a very Middle Eastern-like person and not, uh, maybe not even so similar to modern Egyptians as much as to Middle Eastern people. Now, this is this guy's predicted phenotype with Maina Shakotu. He's predicted to have dark brown eyes, snub-shaped nose, which is kind of interesting. I was expecting him to have maybe more of a Greek nose, but uh, whatever, and black hair. Now, uh, with Wysek, he's also predicted to have dark uh, hair and eyes. And with uh, Snipper Freak, he's predicted to have intermediate skin, black hair and brown eyes. He did not have either BH1 or BH2 or BH3, which is kind of, you know, surprising because these blue-eye haplotypes, even some native, even Native Americans and East Asians tend to have BH1, right? It's a very typical uh, haplotype for every non-African, but this guy, he had, he did not have BH1, which is kind of interesting. So very dark eyes, and he had one of the red hair variants in MC1R, which I found kind of, I don't know, surprising. When it comes to other interesting variants, he actually did not have the G variation that, uh, basically lightened skin color, which I found um, also kind of interesting, surprising. I'm a Russian and I have one derived variant here, which is also very atypical for Europeans. Uh, Europeans and East Asians tend to have two derived variants here. Uh, but this is of course not to be confused with the Keto G variation that has to do with uh, hair color that people mistakenly call the blonde gene or whatever. Uh, when it comes to DRD2, he had a uh, no-go learner mutation in uh, Profinantine Proverit, which is very surprising. Like, it's a uniquely European mutation, and the implications of this is that he had uh, less D2 dopamine receptors, uh, lower risk of schizophrenia, and more likely to be a no-go learner. Uh, in warrior gene, he was heterozygous, which is, once again, a pretty typical genotype for Europeans. Europeans are pretty much the only group of people who have the A allele here, and he has AG here. Uh, when it comes to o OXTR, he wasn't genotyped for the main variation that I look for, but he was genotyped for this variation, and uh, he had the sociopath gene, at least this is what we can infer from his genotype here, is that he would have the sociopath gene, and he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which means uh, he would probably be lactose intolerant as an adult, but by the way guys, every non-European has this genotype here, it's not like... Uh, it's not like there's some variation between all humans, like some humans have this lactose intolerant genotype and some don't, no. It's literally no human besides Europeans, no human besides Northern Europeans, I should specify, has this lactose persistence mutation. So it's not surprising that this Egyptian guy, Egyptian mummy, did not have this mutation. Uh, when it comes to polygenic diseases, polygenic traits, mm, he actually had a pretty high genetic risk score for Crohn's disease, maybe top, judging from the distribution, top 10% here. Uh, he had a average, pretty much average risk score for type 2 diabetes, maybe 50th percentile, uh, and um, he had a very below average, very low risk score for schizophrenia, maybe bottom 15%, bottom 20% here. Uh, he had a below average risk score for Parkinson's, maybe 20th or 30th percentile, and he had a very low risk score for bipolar disorder, in fact, bottom 5%, I would say, even based on the distribution here, and he had a slightly below average risk score for asthma, um, pretty much maybe bottom 30 or bottom 25 percentile. So this is what he scores with Eurogenes K36. Now you can notice that this is a very like non-African result. There's 32 percent East Mediterranean which is kind of a Levantine uh, component. There's e Near Eastern, there's Arabian, there's West Mediterranean, there's Armenian even. Uh, but there's only 9 percent Northeast African and there's only 2.7, 2.3 percent North African. Like modern Egyptians score much more Northeast African and much more North African than this ancient Egypt Egyptian mummy actually. And uh, this is his result with uh, ancient Eurasia K6. Here he's scoring uh, on top of uh, 56.8% Natufian, he's actually scoring 17.8% Ancestral North Eurasian, and there's no other way that he would have got this Ancestral North Eurasian admixture from, besides the CHG, besides Caucasus-related admixture. And with the Oracle, he's actually closest here to Saudis, uh, people from Saudi Arabia, Arabs, not Egyptians. You, s you don't see Egyptians here, 
Egyptian is line, uh, line number 14, so he's closer to Saudis than to people from Egypt, actually. And uh, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Bedouin plus Algerian Bronze Age, or even Saudi plus Alger Algerian. So basically a mixture like Saudi plus something from North Africa. I guess he did have a little bit of a North African component there. Uh, but he's also getting modeled as a mixture of Jew Yemenite plus Western Hunter Gatherer, or Jew Yemenite plus Algerian. So he's clearly not very similar to Egyptians today, and more similar to Arabs, Jews, uh, Yemenites, kind of Semitic people. And uh, in case anybody here was hoping that the ancient Egyptian mummies would be black, uh, they weren't because he's scoring 10% Sub-Saharan and overwhelmingly West Eurasian ancestry here. He has a lot of actually modern West Eurasian Caucasoid drift, which is kind of interesting because this is not a modern individual. And with Eurogenes K13, he's scoring uh, only 6% Northeast African. He's actually scoring some East Asian and Siberian too, which I cannot explain. Uh, but the majority component that he's got is East Mediterranean, which is Levantine. Uh, Levantine Levant Israelite component as I've noticed here and he's scoring Red Sea as well but less Red Sea than East Mediterranean actually um, with the Oracle he's getting modeled as a mixture of Yemenite Jewish plus Sardinian or Yemenite Jewish plus all kinds of Jews basically Ye there's also Yemenite Jewish plus Algerian or Moroccan uh, so basically a mixture of Yemenite Jewish plus something from the Western Mediterranean now this is what he scores with MZL pk 23 b Here you can note the distinctive lack of any archaic components. For example, he's not scoring any archaic human, uh, which is the uniquely chimpanzee slash gorilla slash orangutan component here. When you run gorillas, chimps, or orangutans, they mostly score archaic human here. Uh, he did not score any archaic African, which is a uniquely Neanderthal component. That, the Neanderthals tend to score a mixture of archaic human plus archaic African. Uh, so archaic African is the component that's unique to Neanderthals. It's not the dominant component in Neanderthals, but it's the unique component in Neanderthals. And with the Oracle for this calculator, he's getting modeled as closest to the Egyptians and Bedouins. And he can be modeled as a mixture of Yemenite Jews plus all kinds of Jews. Or like line 4, Yemenite Jews plus Maltese. Or line... Um, Line 10, Yemenite Jew plus Italian Piedmont. So he's clearly like a mixture of uh, Yemenite Jewish, which is, I guess, Arab or Semitic, plus something from the Western Mediterranean. Now, this is his official G25 that I found on Explore Your DNA. He's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Yemenite Jews plus Palestinians or Berbers. <coughs> And with the Oracle, he's closest to Yemenites, all kinds of Yemenites, closer to Yemenites and Saudis and Bedouins, and even Palestinians than to, uh, than to Egyptians. Not very close to modern Egyptian, Egyptians, actually. And he's got some Iranian Neolithic and Kura Araks, which is like Caucasus-related stuff here. And this is his result at Panzi and LK10. And once again, you can see that he's got 20% Caucasus-related stuff, which is a lot, like much more than modern Egyptians, um, definitely much more than North Africans score. And with the Oracle here, he's actually closest to Egyptians, which is... A little bit surprising, but the distance is pretty high, so the distance is not so good. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of, among other things, line 2, Bedouin plus Chechen, or line 4, Bedouin plus Kumik, or line 6, Bedouin plus Lesgin, so clearly more Caucasus-related ancestry than even typical for Bedouins today. This is what he scores with Harappa World. He's scoring a lot of Caucasian here. He's scoring 36% Caucasian, but Caucasian here, uh, don't get me wrong, Caucasian is a Caucasus component, but it's not an ancient Caucasus component. This is a modern Caucasus drift, right? Uh, it's not CHG. CHG here is more Baloch. Baloch is more representative of CHG. And uh, here he's closest to Egyptians, followed by Palestinians, followed by all kinds of Middle Eastern folks. Uh, but he can actually be modeled as a mixture of Samaritan, which is in the um, in the Levant in Israel, plus Libyan, or Yemenite Jewish plus Morocco Jewish, or Yemenite Jewish plus Sardinian. So once again, this is a very Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean result, and not like a modern Egyptian result. So, you know, in conclusion, can all the internet LARPing just stop at once? Like, it's not funny, it's not uh, entertaining, <laughs> you know, it's easy to make fun of, but it's not funny. And um, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. You can actually download this sample in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. And uh, goodbye.